just basically like a rubber band, if you want to call it, on a sheet. And all I do is cut it either with a pair of scissors or you can use a Stanley blade on a piece of card. Just put a roller on top and cut it into thin strips and you should end up basically like, like this, like a, a, your own rubber band. Now, this is a size 14, it's tied on a sort of standard sort of shape, grub hook, uh, barbless hook if you want. And as I say, it's quite simple to tie. Now you can weight the fly what way you like, you can use wire, which I'm going to do, which is a fine copper wire. Or you can use lead, it's up to yourself. Now, just basically put your weight on first in this case. As you can see, I've got the wire on a spool so I can wind it on using the, the bobbin holder. It's going to move away the waist piece. Now this is a, a fine, or a small copper wire. Just going to run this up. This point here. Now we're in line with the point of the hook. Then just break that off. Now we've got our latex. All we do then is cut it into a point. I usually start it as a point anyway. It's up to yourself. Get your, in this case, this is brown thread. Just a uni thread in 8 and dark brown. The colour combinations for this are as many as you like. I mean, there's a, you know, very light to dark brown, olive. Just mix the colours. It gives a great impression. So, this is just a nice style. So, what I'm going to do is catch it on with the tip at that point. Get some super glue onto the wire. Give it a second or so just to soak in. Now the straight the cut the tapered cut will give you a start just to cover the actual wire. And watch the shape that you're getting. Now the bodies on carrots are quite sort of dumpy. So now we're down the body, just to this point, and then we want to start to layer the body, stretch out the latex and do quite a close turn so that you get this rub effect. Just work your way up, nice and tight. Just take your time building up your shape. Now if you're ever looking for a, a maggot type body, this is certainly the one to get. Uh, now we're going to come across with two or three good tight turns. Stretch and trim away the excess. And then just basically tidy up this area. Now to colour the body, we use I use sort of Pantone pens, these ones here. Now I have a few different colours. Here we've got the olives. I'll just bring them over so you can see them. You know the colour combinations there are the colours you can use and uh what them to suit, it's whatever you want, browns and obviously a nice golden yellow. The latex colour is great itself, I mean there's nothing wrong with that. I mean it's a great colour to, to actually just fish and just basically put a, some hackles and stuff what I'm going to be doing here uh, and finish it off and you'll still catch. But I'm going to colour it up just to show you what you can do. Now I'm using this, this is this number here is the, uh, yeah, there's a number, one, two, three, quite simple. <laughs> and what we do is to get the colour, we just bring the pen up from the back. All the way around and under. Just take your time. And just giving it a second or so to dry. It dries quite quick, the pantons. Now you can use permanent markers if you want. Then we'll get the brown. Now I'm just going to blow. Just make sure it's mainly dry. And again, now I'm going to come from the back so that I'm catching the actual rib. And you'll see the colour what happens. It changes totally. There we are. Makes for a nice, really nice body. And we wind in the latex over the copper, you'll get a colour and then a really nice tone coming off. A nice colour, a nice mix. Then it's just a matter of light, leaving it dry. It doesn't take too long can blow it just to help it along. Now for the for the fly itself, we basically lighten up the thorax with the legs and the thorax cover. 
because it's like a tan and brown caddis type and it's a good colour now this is a bleached pheasant tail, it's a cock pheasant tail it's going to take a few fibres off just making sure the, the ends are lined up if you bring it basically 90 degrees from the stem and the feather you'll see that happening now what I'm going to do with these is take the thread down to the eye now stop it about I'll say a mill and a half or two from the eye tie these forward now the length you want the, the legs is not too long I want it to about see the point of the hook so we tie that forward Oops. let's come in two or three turns now and then what we're going to do is make sure that it's not going to move just check there's enough space at the head area you've got to make sure there's enough space there then I'm going to come back and get two more fibres just for the horns just adds to the the pattern you use a few fibres for the horns and what I'm going to do is tie these forward again as well this is an easy way of tying in making sure these are not going to pull out. Now you're looking at least twice the length of the, the legs make sure they're the right length make sure not here, just going to make sure they are it's not going to pull through it there we go and then we come down, make sure I put a bit of wax on my thread at this point Tying these in. Make sure these fibres go flat. This is your thorax cover. Especially more so towards the body. Just make sure they're all in line. Just rub it with your nail. Well, even if you come onto the body, if you're going to think you're going to be too short, just check where you are. So tidy this area up. Now the hackle, I'm just going to use a, this is just a hen, Chinese hen, it's a natural, it's a red or ginger. And it's, just, you want, it's one of the smaller feathers, just, now you can leave this hackle off if you want, but it works, I like it. Gives impression of legs and as well as part of the wing case. Tie it in by the tip. So onto the side, two or three turns down, so maybe the tip of the hackle, should get a wee bit of wax on there. Now I'm going to use my hackle pliers, a small pair of hackle pliers ideal for these small hackles. And then we can draw back the fibres, fold them, so that's one, you're looking for a couple of turns. It's all you're going to get anyway, so just take your time. Let's see, you can leave this hackle out if you want. This fly will still work. There's your two turns. Three, four turns anyway to get it caught in to move the excess. Any fibres at this point, you can draw it back, tie it in. We're going to tidy this area up with some dubbing, so we've got wax on my thread. Any of these stray fibres, we can trim them away. Now we're going to get some dyed, you can use SLF or some synthetic, synthetic dubbins or some sort or some seals fur if you want this is just a dark brown seals fur it's going to lightly dub it onto the thread fiery brown is a good colour this is a kind of mix of both just lightly and tightly every time you turn do a wee twist with the dubbin make sure it's tight so work your way down, keep with the taper of the, uh, the thorax, just check everything's okay, it's fine. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to split, we're going to put a horn either side with an even split of the pheasant tail fibres to form forward legs. 
So I'm just going to bring through this with a thorax cover. Draw everything back. Except for that. Again, just take our time. Have a wee look. Just a wee two or three more fibers this side. I'll show you what it looks like from the top. Much easier to just make sure it's like that and then bring it through nice and tight. Pinch and look now we can pull this. Let's bring this in over. I broke that one but I'll trim away. You see the cover there? Now we can come in and trim this. Take our time. You put wax on my thread. Now there's some of the fibres going slightly over the eye. Just gonna draw them back with my nail and with the thread. Just take your time and build up the head. There we go, let's leave it there. And then we can come in and put finish. Always keeping the thread tight, never let the thread go. Again, keep it tight, trim that away. Is that broken fibre? I'm just going to come in and take it away. There we are. Now you can see on the top the type of finish you get. Now, what I'm going to do here as well, we trim away the hackle on the underside so we see more of the body. You see the, the type of finish you get, you get a nice. You can draw this in a wee bit, I mean you can pull these down slightly. But I think that's a bit fine. You can take, if you find a two out, you can sort of crease it slightly with your finger, just take the fibres forward and pull them back, press on it. But that's fine. Then we can finish off a fine coat of varnish. All the way around. And there we are. Again as well we could colour the back up even more if you want. You can use a darker pen. You can actually mark the back. I'll show you what you can do here. Just get this is a permanent marker, a brown one. You just basically come all the way down. That gives you a nice mark, the top side. You can mess around with it and get the colour combination that you like. You see, it's, it's quite a simple flat tie and you can fill your box and you can do the dark. Get some bigger ones here, I've got some large caddis, these ones are the big. I mean, totally different size. Size 10s and so on. Latex is a great material to use in, in the bodies. The, they do last. I mean, I've had a plenty of fish on them. Some people say they don't last too long, but I find them fine. They catch me a few fish. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And that's the latex caddis pupa. <laughs>